Well, I had every intention of going out into the field and filming this video, but weather kind of hit us. It's uh, it snowed over the weekend, it's raining right now. Just couldn't make it work, unfortunately. So as a consolation, I brought the outdoors with me. The scented candle. This is white spruce. So now it'll feel like I'm in the woods proper. This is gonna be a long one, so prepare yourselves. We're gonna look at a lot of bladed tools and give a little talk on every single one of them. So buckle up, maybe grab a coffee, and let's get started. So we're gonna break things up into categories, starting with the folders. As you can see before me, I don't have very many folders. I don't use them very often, other than like utility blades, but I didn't think construction tools were appropriate for this video since we're talking about outdoor gear. This is my full collection of folders. This right here is a Wenger Swiss Army knife. I have absolutely no idea what, the, what model this is or if it's even in production still. This is uh, one of the first knives I ever received from my dad. So this is a, a very important tool to me. I've carried it and used it for years. It often just kind of rides in my everyday backpack or uh, shoulder bag. So a winger, Swiss Army knife. This is different than Victorinox. It's the other brand. This Opinel was given to me by Ernie from Paleo Hiker MD. It's a, a carbon steel version. When I was part of the outdoor arena, we did a gear exchange video where we all sent gear to each other. And this is one of the pieces of equipment he sent me. As you can see, it's used and uh, not very clean. I should probably clean that up, but I often strike my ferro rod with this one or use it to open up boxes. I've got a flex cut carving jack. I prefer this one. They make a couple different variety. This is carbon steel blades, all different hooks and grooves and notch cutters. Very handy. I've done lots of spoons with this one. I like it a lot for its portability in that I have a whole bunch of different carving tools in one handheld piece. This is the Leatherman Surge. This is a big, heavy tool. Uh, I have carried it generally in a backpack. I don't usually put it on my hip because it pulls my pants down. You've got pretty much everything you need right here. You've got, of course, obviously wire cutters and pliers, but Phillips head, bit kits, can openers, bottle openers, saws. I like that it's one hand operation. I do appreciate that because there have been lots of times when I've needed that and using just one hand been able to do things. I also have a Leatherman rebar, forgot the name for a second. I picked this one up to carry with me fishing so that it was a little bit smaller than the, the Surge. Um, the reason I chose this one is just because it has the replaceable carbide wire snips. And those are all my folding tools. So let's move on to saws. This is an Agawa Canyon folding buck saw. Agawa? Agawa? I brought this one uh, on a solo overnighter that I didn't successfully finish. Very handy, uh, a little bit bulky, but for actual like heavier use, I do prefer having that longer blade for that, that one has. Uh, this is a uh, Baco Laplander, very simple. You saw, it's, there's nothing fancy about this one. Well used, still carry that one. Maybe need a new one eventually. Here's my Silky Gomboy. It's got the large teeth, so it's for heavy use, soft wood. I've cut down entire trees with this saw and it's not even giving me any trouble. Love that saw. Need a new one though. The, the teeth kind of got dulled when I, when I did some bone tools and survival training, so there are my saws. Okay, hopefully you can see all of this in frame. We've got two Hultaforce axes, Granfors Brooks, and a Condor axe. Now I'm calling all of these axes, even though technically they're all either hatchets or tomahawks, that's just what I call them. This is the first one I purchased. It's a big boy, 19 inch classic axe. Um, this is maybe what you might call a bushcraft axe. It's a good size for, for crafting and felling. 
small trees. I wouldn't try to tackle a large tree with something like this. But you might be able to if you took, took out chunks or something like that. Um, I find it a little bit short for me, so I'm hoping to save up for something a little more like the 24 to 26 inch length handle, like a Scandinavian axe. I just think for my size it works better. I also got this one in accompaniment to that one, and I actually carried this one quite a bit, especially in uh, when I was doing survival training. One of my favorite axes, it's their, uh, I don't even know what it is, it's like a hiker's hatchet or something very light it's a one pound head and I think it's only like maybe a 14 or 15 inch handle it does a very good job of splitting chopping and uh, prepping firewood got enough heft to it to do quite a bit of work while still being light enough to carry comfortably these two are recent purchases that I haven't actually used uh, this is the Granfors Brooks Granfors Brook outdoor axe and a sheath that I made for it because I didn't like the sheath that came with it. The metal collar is very nice, good for protecting the, the pole, which is called the pole, from, uh, from getting damaged like uh, I think this one did. This one got split up pretty bad, chopping on wood. This whole thing weighs a pound. This is the lightest hatchet I could find because I wanted something for backpacking that I could use in combination to a small knife, like a three inch blade. And then this one I bought after watching The Patriot <laughs> and feeling like I had to prep for upcoming apocalypse stuff. Don't judge me. Uh, this is a Condor Tomahawk with, I think it's called a Pipe Hawk of that kind of pipe end, that hammer pole. Uh, I have not used this, it just kind of sits by my bed in case I have to defend myself or my family. This in one hand, long knife in the other. You know what I'm talking about. So okay, so those are my choppers. Let's switch to machetes. Now I generally don't use machetes. I bought them more to make videos and to do some testing with them. This is a UST machete that still has the, uh, the sticker on it when it was first purchased because my wife bought it for me at like some used clothing store, like Ross or something like that, to do a test. She thought it'd be funny giving me this and having me test it up against my other machete, which is the Condor something parang. Ultralight parang, I don't know what it is. She thought it'd be kind of funny, so. Okay, hopefully you can see these all spread out. I don't know what to say much on these. You can see all of them. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. Um, we've got a whole bunch of different Mora knives. This is the first uh, Mora that I purchased. It's one of the heavy duty variety, with the orange handle. Good knife. Then I picked up a couple wooden handled ones. I think I've got like two of these, maybe three. We've got the Light My Fire Edition. This is the stainless steel version, so it has the multi-grind. You've got the more modernized 511, I think. Oh, that's right, I'm missing one. Speaking of 511s, this fell into the bottom of my box. Got the original 511. A couple high Q in carbon, a couple high Q in stainless, and a cans bowl. Cons bowl, whatever this is called. Uh, this is probably my most used knife right here. I've carried and used this one for pretty much everything. This is one of the first knives I ever purchased myself. Bear grills, yeah! Um, I thought I was so cool. Steel sucks. Chipped on a branch. Uh, and then this was one of the first knives I bought based off of a YouTube review. And I think it was from a Prepared Mind 101 review back when he was doing a lot of Schrade videos. Purchased this one. It's okay. It's a hollow grind. Not a huge fan anymore. Handle's not great. I don't like the uh, exposed tang kind of digs into your hand. Uh, Sog. 
seal pup a something? I don't know. Made in Taiwan. Oh, seal pup elite. It's okay. Another hollow grind. Not great for, for outdoor stuff. Okay for utility stuff, I guess. This knife right here is the knife. My very first knife ever of all time. This is it right here. This, I have no idea what it is or what it's called. This was given to me by my grandfather. He gave me and my, my couple other of my cousins a set of these. I'm sure he bought it on the phone or something. Did a mail-in order. Um, didn't know anything about knives. Didn't really care. I think I was like maybe seven years old when he got it for me. I wasn't allowed to have it until much later. And I think I tried to sharpen it with like this sharpening stone that came with it. This thing. And completely scratched it up. Again, I was like a little kid. This one, I have no idea. I have no idea. Any, I have nothing, no information about this one. So I'm hoping by showing it, you can take a look at it and tell me any detail you can. This was given to me by my brother-in-law. Old, old piece of, piece of metal. Um, Western Boulder, Colorado, something patent made in the USA, old knife. And uh, yeah, I have no idea. I think it's a hunting knife. Yeah, so if you have any information on this knife, let me know. It'd be kind of interesting to find out more about that one. Okay, let's clear this off and get some high-end knives on here. We're going to start things off with some more unique makers, ones that are a little less common, and then we'll go on to the more traditionally known uh, makers. All right, so we've got black feather knives. We've got my journey. You've all seen this one before. Well used, well loved. We've got a bush tool. Uh, not used as much. Awesome blade. And we've got two of his black lures. One of them in 01 tool steel and the other one in RWL 34 with iron wood handles. Beautiful knife. This is a Papa Bear Knives SC3. Alan is a good friend of mine. He makes these out of his home in South Carolina. And I highly recommend his knives to anybody. I've made a few sheaths for him that he shipped out with his knives and they're, I mean, his knives are phenomenal. He's doing great work. Love seeing what he's posting and, and showing off. I'll save that one for later. Uh, this is a, I don't even remember. This is a Dozier D2 neck knife of some kind. Very, very short blade, maybe two inches, with a very long handle. I've been made fun of by family members for, for this, but it's comfortable in the hand, and it can be used for many utility tasks. Even though it's a hollow grind, I still like it. We've got the NB knives his kind of take on the jack lore, which is right here, right next to it, the jack lore. Jack lore classic, incredible knife. This is one I won in a contest. Um, antler handle, carbon steel blade, absolutely no idea who made it. It's been so long. I don't even know if I knew when I won it, <laughs> but very cool. I've never had a more traditional looking knife that literally looks like it came out of the 1800s. I feel like the same truck is driven by three times. And it was sent in a hand tanned leather sheath that he made himself as well. So it's a pretty cool system. I might actually take it out and use it one of these days. Haven't yet. Not a huge fan of the asymmetrical handle that this one has. It fits nicely though, it, like hugs my hand really well and it feels like a be really good grip. So as I've matured as an outdoorsman, I think I'm appreciating that even more. All right, so I got a business card here. So this knife was sent to me by Seven Forge Knives and yes, the seven is backwards on purpose. I think they're based out of Texas. So that is one that they sent me to test, show you guys. 
This is not the official video for it. That's coming up in a later Blade Talk Tuesday. And then we're gonna take it out in the field and put it through its paces. So I'll tell you more about that in the future. This is it so far. Very impressed with their work. All right, last group of fixed blades. What we've got here is a collection of LT Wright, AA Forge, William Collins, and one Bark River. Which isn't really even mine. I mean, it is mine in that I bought it, but I gave it to my wife for her because it's the handle's too small for me to really use comfortably. Let's get rid of that. Let's, let's just put that aside. It's not mine. I don't claim it. You could probably see behind me, there's this like giant pile of tools just like overflowing on the chair that I usually sit on. So many, so many. I've got a junior woodsman. Nice beefy thick handle in a sheath that I made for it. We've got the Master Woodsman Blackbird, first production run. Uh, the AA Forge knives I have, I've got a Puko, AEBL 332nd, Master Birch Handles, beautiful knife. You'll have to excuse the car noise. I don't care, it's too annoying to try to pause every time someone drives by. Hopefully the lapel mic that I'm wearing helps with the audio. Uh, this is the Hiker, the three inch version or the three and a half inch version. I prefer this size of knife more than any combined with a hatchet. I think that you can get a ton of work done with this. It's pretty much all you need. Sheath I made and the a Forge Trout. Ghost G10 handles with brown liners. Beautiful combination. Uh, let's see, and that leaves old reliable, old faithful LT Wright knives. Now I've been collecting LT Wright knives since they were pretty much the first like semi-custom knife that I ever purchased was an LT Wright GNS, so They've cycled through the channel a lot. You've probably seen them a lot if you've been watching this, this channel for any length of time, but I've settled on these six for, for now. Eventually I wanna get a Genesis again, that'll be a, a seventh knife, which I think is a perfect number of knives. We've got the long knife, or the Chamonix from Nature Reliance School and LT Wright knives. As much as I said I don't love long knives, this is one exception. I think it's super well balanced, slices very well very very cool I'm gonna take that out and do more with it I promise and the GNS that I got through the red wall special if you know what that is basically it was built custom for me with brown handles and zombie green liners or toxic green I don't know uh, 01 tool steel just a real basic knife that I have used and abused for a number of years it's got a nice patina growing just faithful, faithful knife that I use often. Also, the GNS in Scandi Grind that I have is the second anniversary edition Hidden Woodsman knife. This knife is fantastic. It's one of the best, I think, that LT Wright has produced over the years. Any GNS really is great for my hand and my needs. I do like a thicker handle though, and this one fits my hand almost perfectly. Speaking of perfect shaped, perfect fitting handles, if you see these three knives over here, they're all the same. I have three native survival knives, second generation. Why? Because I believe that these are the best handled knives. <laughs> Dirt on that one. Because I believe that these are the best bushcraft knives that I have ever used. The handles are phenomenal. They fit my hand like they were made for it. The blade shape is perfect. It's nice and thin, so you get a lot of work done. And they're not, they're not heavy, they're not cumbersome, they're just great to use. And so I have three of them that I've collected over the years. And it's kind of funny how I got them. Basically, this was the first one I bought, right here. It's got a nice patina growing on the end from cutting food with it. 
Then I bought another one, a green handled one, sold that one, and bought a tan handled one, sold that one, so that I had only one, and then a buddy of mine offered me this one, so I bought it, and then another buddy was selling his, so I bought that one. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Blade Talk Tuesday. I know it was a bit long going through every single knife and axe and tool that I have, but I hope you enjoyed it and maybe got some ideas for your future purchases. Believe it or not, my collection is not as expansive as some, but it's definitely more expansive than most. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to spend with me. That's all I have for this video. In the next video, I don't know what we're doing. I'll figure it out. So until then, I'll see you later. Take care.